Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. It's a brand new week and of course we, we've we all been a little bit down this weekend. It wasn't a great Chelsea weekend to be honest. It had potential and it, uh, yeah, we lost to Arsenal didn't we in the FA Cup which is a real bit of a shame. We're going to talk about a little bit more of the backfall of that today as well as some updated Chelsea news and you guys being little journalists out in London. I say little, the geese is quite tall but you guys being journalists taking pictures like the paparazzi to send to me of our players hanging out together in London. So without any further ado, let's get the administration out of the way first. It's a brand new month. We've got new goals. We've got new things you want to achieve here on GBFC. And I would like to ask you politely to subscribe to the George Benson Football Channel so that you never miss a video. Chelsea Arsenal. It was, you know, we've, we've had a lot of things to say about this one. And I did my six things we learned video. And I'm there like halfway through it thinking normally, even when it's a really bad defeat, I try my absolute best to give as many positive takes to progress with moving forward. Because I understand that you guys watch these videos and you want to feel good about Chelsea, you wanna feel good about football. Even when we lose, we lose all together. And the more I've looked at the backlash from this game, the more I, I get a bit more calm about the reasons why we lost. And I think at this moment with Chelsea, when we look at the team that we've got, we look at the manager, we look at everything that's happened this season, the referee yesterday, or on Saturday even, didn't even give us a flipping chance to do anything to win that game because every little decision that should have gone Chelsea's way, didn't go Chelsea's way. So even though we didn't really, I'd say, give everything that we could have done, every other variable that wasn't within our control went against us. And when that happens, it almost makes it easier in a way to get over it. But at the same time, the injustice makes it even harder, makes it more of a bitter pill to swallow. But what I've decided to do with that game is kind of put it to bed in my mind. Yes, we lost. It would have been nice to get a first trophy. But then devil's advocate, how much nicer will it be when we do win our first trophy under Frank Lampard and the fans can be there to celebrate as well? So maybe it's just someone in there saying, you know what? The Chelsea fans, they'd have liked to have won it, but we're going to save that special moment where Super Frank lifts his first trophy as Chelsea manager for a moment where we can all be there together and reveling in the victory. So, enough about Arsenal. We're going to move on from that now. We've got some breaking news. I mean, it's not really necessarily breaking news. It's just a bit creepy in a, in a weird way that I'm reporting on this here on the George Benson Football Channel. But one of you guys sent me a little DM on Instagram yesterday. And it was two photos with two Chelsea players all wearing masks and looking all fancy in Selfridges. If you don't know what Selfridges is, if you're not from the UK, it's just a very nice shop where usually famous people or rich people with a lot of money in their pockets go and spend money on nice clothes. So good job, boys. You've done well to be there. Reese James, nice little picture with RJ. Chelsea's right back or right wing back. I like the photo. It's very nice, socially distanced as ever. But the other news that is very important and the reason why I even wanted to talk about this today is the other picture in the same shop where the boys are wearing the same shirts on the same day is of Timo Werner, which is absolutely massive in a way. I don't know if the phone call was had from Reese or Timo and it's like, hey, Mr. Timo, you wanna come down? Well, I don't know why I'm putting on an American accent here. I'm just getting a bit weird in this one today. But it looks as though these two may have well been hanging out at Selfridges together. And even though this is like clutching at straws of a kind of story, it's good to see that Timo Werner is so well integrated within this Chelsea squad already. You see as well on the match day of the FA Cup final, he's out there with the boys training. He's trying to get himself in the faces of his teammates. Whenever a new player signs for a new club, not that I've ever signed for a club as a professional footballer, but there's always a bleeding in period. There's always a period where you're the outcast or the, you're the outlier of the group. You're not in the click at this moment in time. But what I've seen from Timo in the footage and the pictures that I have seen, is that he looks like he's integrating very fast, which A, is huge in terms of the chemistry of Chelsea for next season when we start the season. And it's not that far away, it's just over a month and a bit away until next season begins, let alone bloody Bayern on Saturday. We'll be talking about that a lot this week. But as well as that, if he is going on little shopping trips to Selfridges with his boys, it just goes to show that 
Chelsea and their players, the backroom staff, everyone is doing all they can to make sure that Timo's arrival is as seamless as possible. And then when he ends up making his Chelsea debut, we will then know that he is ready to play alongside his teammates. And it's not going to be that long before we start seeing connections on the pitch being built the way that they have been built off the pitch. So yeah, thank you very much for sending in those photos, my man. I will put your Instagram link in the description as a thank you for giving me a little story here on GBFC on a Monday afternoon. So you guys go drop him a follow. Let's talk a little bit, shall we? About, uh, you know, you know who I'm going to say, don't you? So Kai Havertz, you know, the guy that we thought was going to sign and still hasn't signed, but he's probably going to sign and it's not a watch, but when's he going to sign? Like, I'm getting nervous, guys. The longer it goes while we don't sign Havertz, I've got my boys messaging me now. Let me turn the phone on mute. I'm bloody working. The longer it goes without Chelsea signing Havertz, and it seems as though over the weekend there still wasn't an official bid tabled by Chelsea. I'm not going to sit here and say that I don't think the deal's going over the line because I called it on this channel that the deal would go over the line before everybody else did anyway. So we're not changing our mind on that. Havertz is still going to sign, but the way it's looking at the moment, I get you guys asking me every day about why I think we haven't seen an announcement video. If you watch the Kai Havertz documentary that Bayer Leverkusen uploaded to YouTube, I don't know if it's just because I've got blue tinted glasses on, but it does feel as though it's a goodbye video. And when I watch the ending, I kind of feel as though it's like Bayer Leverkusen's way of just taking their young talisman, the man who, he seems like an absolute Don on all accounts. I was looking for a better word there, but Don was the only one that came to my bloody mind. Kai Havertz seems like a really top bloke. And I think that as well as his professionalism and the fact that he's already such a talented footballer, all of these little additional signs, even though it's not quite the same as a 73 million pound transaction, all of these little things are probably gonna be giving Chelsea even more reason to push this deal over the line. That being said, there's also the small matter that Bayer Leverkusen have still got to compete in the Europa League. Chelsea have still got their game against Bayern and then who knows what after that, probably nothing, but hopefully something in the Champions League. So with all of this stuff going on, we've seen that it's very, very common that Chelsea Football Club, super frank in his interviews, Petr Cech, when he stopped outside of Wembley and asked by a fan about signing Kai Havertz, Chelsea don't like to give anything away whilst the player still has duties to perform on the pitch with another club. So in terms of Chelsea's professionalism, my realistic outlook as to when Kai Havertz will be announced or if the deal is even gonna go ahead, I think it will. I think it will be after Bayer Leverkusen have competed in the Europa League. Bayer Leverkusen will have Havertz in the squad. Havertz will be playing, and I think it's respectful of Chelsea to think, you know, this signing is going to go ahead. We can let Havertz focus on the football to do the best he can for Leverkusen. And then once everything is done with the European competitions, Kai Havertz can be announced as a Chelsea player. That's what I think about that one. Let's then move. I'm going to do a video talking about this in a lot more detail but today I just want to break the news, even though it's not really breaking news because this was a few days ago, but I didn't make a video on it because we had the small matter of a cup final to deal with. Chelsea have supposedly been linked with Barcelona's German goalkeeper, Mr. Ter Stegen. The man is 28 years old in the prime years of his career. And the way that Ter Stegen plays is something that does excite me as a Chelsea fan very much. And if we see what Frank Lampard has liked to do this season with the three at the back, I think if we do make signings defensively, we will revert back to that. But say Frank does see the future of this club with three players in the centre-back position, to Sagan is the perfect ball-playing goalkeeper to bring in at Chelsea. Not only that, but he's got two years left on his current Barcelona deal. There's not a new deal for him on the table. And even if there was, he's not signed it yet. So two years, this could be the summer that Barcelona could cash in on the German international. Now I look at Oblak, I look at 120 million. I don't think the Stegen will cost that much. There's also links that Chelsea are interested in Nick Pope. We'll go on to that one in a moment. But just from the basics of what I've seen from Ter Stegen, Oblak, in my opinion, is the world's best goalkeeper. But at the same price, or the same time, sorry, the price you pay for the world's best goalkeeper is also astronomical. So that being said, Ter Stegen probably wouldn't be as expensive. It would be cheaper than Oblak but it would still be a very feasible option for Chelsea. Now, I asked you guys in my Discord server, if you're not yet joining the GBFC Discord, it's $1 a month. I'll leave a link to it in the description. You guys seem pretty interested into Stegen as an option. 
I don't know how reliable these reports are. They're coming out from Spain. And I think, again, it's just a case of like, Chelsea need a keeper. They're buying a lot of German players or they're interested in a lot of German players. To Stegen, just throw the name in the hat. I don't know how legit it is. But again, it's something that I would like to see because I think we can all decide now that from Frank Lampard's choices as to who he starts with Kepa's form, with the overall stats that don't really favour Kepa this season, Chelsea are looking at a replacement goalkeeper. So another story of another German that Chelsea have been linked with over the weekend is Ginter, a centre-back. Thank goodness, praise the flipping Lord. Like, I thought we weren't going to get linked with any more centre-backs. It's Declan Rice who, again, another story to just throw on the screen for you. Declan Rice is supposedly trying to push for a move to Chelsea. If we see to Stegen come in and Ginter come in, the entire spine of Chelsea's team, das ist gut, ja. So at this moment in time, there's nothing really to report in terms of concrete bids, concrete accepted offers, contracts being offered. The FA Cup final has been taking up a lot of the Chelsea news as well as this Champions League game coming up. So what I would expect Chelsea fans this week is probably another week of tabloid newspapers just throwing big names out in the hats. But I think after the Champions League game against Bayern, and again, whatever might come afterwards, I don't just want to speak it into existence that we've already lost because we flipping haven't yet. Let's wait and see. But again, Chelsea being linked with top players. And I think it's important now that we look forward. We don't dwell too much on that FA Cup defeat. It's been an amazing season, all in all, finishing in the top four, even making it to that cup final in the first place. There's going to be some more videos coming out where I really analyse Frank Lampard's managerial season. Six things we learned from Chelsea's season as a whole will go out after the Bayern game as well. Loads of content coming your way. Subscribe to GBFC if you're new around here and haven't already done so. Drop me a follow on both Twitter and Instagram. Links to those are in the description. It's just this that I'm putting across my face right now. Discord server, $1 a month. Easy as you like. Come on, you blues. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.